I'm Hannah, and this is Hannah's Books. I mentioned in my very first video, when I answered the booktube newbie tag, that I was hoping to read Louisa May Alcott's Little Women in December, and that I was wondering if anyone had planned a read-along. Imagine my great pleasure to wake up this morning to an announcement by Kate Howe and Megan Hannon to not only read Little Women in December, but to follow up throughout 2020 by reading most of Alcott's other novels, and to kick things off next month, nonfiction November, with the biography of Louisa May Alcott, Eden's Outcast by John Madison. I am so excited to participate throughout the year, and I hope you will too. I'd like to propose an extension project just during the month of December. I'm calling it All Things Alcott. I would love it if you would join me to read some additional books about Little Women, books about Alcott and her time, books that Alcott herself read and referenced in her work, and books written more recently that are in conversation with the work of Louisa May Alcott. Before I get started discussing the challenges, I'd like to recommend a phenomenal edition of Little Women, the annotated version, with an extensive introduction and supporting notes by John Madison, the same author who wrote the biography Eden's Outcasts. During All Things Alcott, I plan to read books from several categories. Feel free to join me for all of these challenges or just one. Also, please share if you have any additional ideas or recommendations or resources about Louisa May Alcott, about Little Women, or about the place and period in which she wrote. For the first challenge, I suggest reading a nonfiction book about Little Women. Two I'm eager to read are Meg, Joe, Beth, Amy, the Story of Little Women and Why It Still Matters by Anne Boyd Rio, published in 2018, and March Sisters on Life, Death, and Little Women with essays by Katie Bullock, Jenny Zhang, Carmen Maria Machado, and Jane Smiley. Yes, that Jane Smiley. Actually, all four women are major authors in their own right. Meg, Joe, Beth, Amy is a book which has received fantastic reviews so far. Its author sets out to give us a basic explanation of how the book was written and published, setting it in the context of the social history of Alcott's time and place. The book then tracks the fate of both the novel and its many adaptations over the years. Rio talks about how the book has been received in various time periods by teachers and literary scholars, as well as by feminist topics that I find really fascinating. And she ends with a discussion of how Little Women fits into today's world and why it still resonates as deeply as it does. The book March Sisters, published this year in 2019, is quite different. In this slim volume, each of the four contributors writes an essay about one of the four March Sisters, exploring how particular characteristics and plot lines weave in and out with the author's own personalities and experiences. One writes about her complicated relationship with clothes, one about her fears of being too unfeminine, one about tragedy, and one about the reclamation of the feminist side of one of the characters often seen as non-feminist. For the second challenge, I suggest reading a book mentioned in Little Women or another Alcott novel. Alcott mentions other literature extensively throughout her book, works from William Shakespeare's Macbeth to Oliver Goldsmith's The Vicar of Wakefield, from Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin to the work of Mariah Edgeworth and Frances Burney. Two books extremely important in Little Women that I hope to read during December are Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan and The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. For the third challenge, consider reading some fan fiction, if you will, contemporary novels written in conversation with Louisa May Alcott's work. Top of the list is Geraldine Brooks' novel, March, winner of the 2006 Pulitzer Prize. Brooks' novel explores the trauma that Alcott's father experienced during his time in the Civil War and what complications emerged as he tried to unite with his young family, who knew little about what he had seen on the front lines. I also hope to read The Other Sister by Elise Hooper, an Imagine Life of youngest sister Amy and her experiences training to be an artist. 
I've heard that the new film may allow Amy to be a more sympathetic and even feminist character than many of the previous film versions of Little Women have shown. If that's true, it sounds like the other sister might be a really interesting pairing. There are several other possibilities of contemporary novels in conversation with Little Women. One is The Lost Summer of Louisa May Alcott by Kelly O'Connor McNeese, which combines fact and fiction to imagine a romantic life for Louisa that fits in with the general plot line of the second part of Little Women. Also, there's Trix Wilkins' The Courtship of Joe March, an alternative ending to the novel for those who never got over some of Alcott's choices, especially what happened to Beth and to Lori. It sounds like great fun to imagine what might have happened if the Alcott sisters had made different choices and had different experiences in their lives. Finally, The Little Women Letters by Gabriel Donnelly follows the descendants of the March family to today's era when one young woman finds her great-great-grandmother's cache of letters, giving her guidance applicable to her current life. For the fourth challenge, consider reading another work in a classic children's literature series. I love the wonderfully warm and spunky novels by Ellen Montgomery in the Anna Green Gables series. The phenomenal books in Arthur Ransom Swallows and Amazon series, which I didn't read until I was an adult. And the charming and somewhat problematic Little House books by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Or perhaps you'd like to read one of Frances Hodgson Burnett's novels, such as The Secret Garden or The Little Princess. For a bonus, that is, for extra credit, consider reading a second biography of Alcott or a discussion of the fascinating community in which she lived. Since Madison's biography, Eden's Outcast, is subtitled The Story of Louisa May Alcott and Her Father, perhaps you'd enjoy the biography by Eve LaPlante, Marmy and Louisa, the untold story of Louisa May Alcott and her mother. Two other more introductory biographies are Harriet Risen's Louisa May Alcott, The Woman Behind Little Women, and Susan Cheever's Louisa May Alcott, A Personal Biography. There's also a biography for young people, written nearly a century ago, but one I read as a young girl, called Invincible Louisa by Cornelia Meeks. Meeks' study won the Newbery Medal in 1934, and it's still a lovely book. If you're looking for a broader study which discusses Alcott's participation in the interesting community around her, you might check out Fruitlands, The Alcott Family and Their Search for Utopia by Richard Francis, or American Bloomsbury, Louisa May Alcott, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Margaret Fuller, and Henry David Thoreau, Their Lives, Their Loves, and Their Work by Susan Cheever. Finally, there's The Concord Quartet, Alcott, Emerson, Hawthorne, Thoreau, and The Friendship, that freed the American mind by Samuel Schreiner. I hope to find a time to see the new film adaptation of Little Women at the end of December or perhaps the first weekend of January, depending on my family commitments. I can't wait to hear what you all think of the film, as well as what you now think of the book, whether it's a reread of a beloved favorite or the first time you've ever read it. I'm looking forward to reading around it to put the novel in a broader context, both historically and literarily, but also in terms of its deep meanings and resonances today. Thanks for joining me today on Hannah's Books. I hope we'll have a wonderful time together reading and reading about Louisa May Alcott. See you next time. Mm -hmm.